The following panel was filmed from very poor seating on Sunday morning and with no tripod. So you may just want to turn this on and listen to the audio. Next HeroCon, I, I'll try to get someone local to bring a tripod because I just can't fit them in my suitcase. Anyway, I hope you find this entertaining somehow, nonetheless. Uh, I'm John Hegner, uh, I'm a mission designer on uh, City of Heroes, and I've been uh, with the team since August of last year. Um, and I've been in the city Shelton Arts and the Midnighter Club, and uh, I've been working on Victoria for the Hi everyone, uh, wait, come on. Uh, my name is Joe Morrissey, I go by Hero One. I um, came on around issue 10 and helped uh, wrap up the content for that and then worked on Ouroboros and then uh, brought in the, the Midnighter Club and then uh, Mission Architect and now working very closely with John on uh, creating this uh, utopia at a cost we call Praetor. to play all these guys' missions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, Pretoria, it's a world that's like Primal Earth, but unlike Primal Earth, how did it get to start? What's its genesis? First, there was darkness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think specifically in regards to Pretoria, we started in 1893 uh, when Stefan Richard was born. And from there, uh, three years later, we, was when uh, Marcus Cole was born. And they became friends and uh, grew up in Shroud City. And from there, we went to World War I and the events of the mustard gas, which is very similar to what we had in Marcus Cole's history to begin with. And then he became emperor. And that was pretty much about it. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was all like, I was like, really oh, is he really going to tell the whole back story right now? No. So, uh, one of the things uh, I'd like to, uh, to to point out is that although uh, Praetoria is an alternate dimension to the Earth that City of Heroes plays on, um, it is not simply a dimension where statesmen went evil. It's a dimension where there's a lot of things that are different. Um, and it's, it was from before Statesman was even born, um, but Statesman has been, or you know, Marcus Cole has been a, a huge catalyst to uh, many of the world-changing events that have happened uh, in the world. So he definitely has his, uh, his mark on, on the world. So. What are some of the historical differences, some of the branching points, besides just the stuff involved with Stephen Richter and Marcus Cole? How has the world changed? Well, uh, one of the things that we did with Pretoria um, when we started writing up the, the backstory for Cole and everything is that we realized that uh, very small changes very early in the characters' lives that we introduce, uh, reintroduced basically with Pretoria um, had huge effects later on, especially when we started getting into the, the mentality of these characters and how they were just slightly different from the characters we all know and love. Um, Who, who became president that wasn't supposed to be president? Yeah, so um, there's, this, there's this event in real world history that happens in the primal earth in Pretoria called the Korean War, and that ends slightly differently in primal earth, and uh, coal is a big factor in that. Um, Pretoria. Pretoria. Oh, sorry. Pretoria. Um, yeah, coal is a big factor in that conflict, and uh, having the outcome be very different than what we are familiar with in the primal earth. We'll hold questions till the end. <laughs> um, Bruce, can you repeat the question again? I was distracted. <laughs> yeah, what are some of the branching points uh, in the history of Praetoria Earth that makes it different, that change things? Um, well, the, I, I don't want to give away too much, but the, the incident at the Well of Furies um, with, the two, with the two major characters was dramatically different in, 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 in Praetoria, and that um, set in motion a lot of events and stopped a lot of events that you're familiar with in COH. Um, we've already said in, the, in, in a previous panel that, that Stefan Richter uh, is dead. He was killed by Marcus Cole. And when you think about what that would mean to Arachnus as a whole, 
um, what the group was before uh, Recluse came in and brought it to the to the forefront, um, and and what that would mean to just in general what's going on in the world. That was drastically different. Um, we had a we had a bigger influence with Hamadon as a whole. A lot of it was because of a lot of the the, the poor choices that the governments of the world made that would bring out uh, the devouring earth much sooner than you previously seen, and the, the lack of a super power, power presence to really drive them back in what type of a world you, live, you would live in if, if that was the case. Have this affects any of the real world events that you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, John, I, you might as well just tell the, the story of Arthur. So, um, the supers on, on the scene, basically, uh, the warfare is completely different in our uh, comic book land. Um, so the only weapon, really, that uh, people can rely on uh, to fight supers are nuclear weapons. And uh, if anyone's a fan of history, uh, MacArthur really, really, really wanted to use nuclear weapons, like, a lot in North Korea. Um, and so he does in Pretoria. And, yeah, that sort of starts a whole steamrollering process through the rest of the history that uh, Marcus Cole was kind of against. Yeah, he, he doesn't, on, on multiple levels, uh, both as a, because again, he is not the evil statesman, uh, he is a man that believes very strongly in what the world should be, uh, regardless of what, um, the way the world is. And he, so there's a part of him that, that wants to, a large part of him wants to protect the world. And when he sees these nukes going on, he sees it as, as an act against humanity as, as a whole, and he he is he sees himself as the protector of that humanity, and he is he he's very upset, rightfully so. Um, I would be too, and that sets in motion events that that makes him uh, take control over over what what we are doing to ourselves. He's got my vote. Yeah, <laughs> and we always wanted to have this concept of. Uh, it's it's really I wouldn't say easy, but um, to have a guy like Emperor Cole in in a world, it's very easy to go. Oh, you know what? He's just the strongest dude, and he just beats up anybody who who stands in his way. And we're like, that's no. Like we we wanted to come up with a situation where we gave him the world, where we asked him to save us, because we do that in Primal Earth all all the time. But our our Marcus Cole in Primal Earth is a guy who goes, okay, I'll save you, and now you can go make the same mistakes over and over again. And now I can save you over and over again. No, no, no. Keep, keep make, making the same mistakes. It's, it's all right. I'll, I'll just be here to save you again. And, and I personally think that the Praetorian Cole is much smarter. And then he said, "No, we're going to make sure you don't make the same stupid mistakes over and over again." So we, we had the rise of um, Marcus Cole, um, Emperor Cole, who some people call a tyrant. What, what's his rule of Praetoria like? Wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, four, four, day, four day work weeks, you get Wednesday off in the middle, um, six hours a day, donuts every morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is no like janitorial work or anything like that. The, the clockwork handles all of that stuff. Um, and uh, everyone gets a corner office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice reflective windows. With, yeah, nice windows. <laughs> It's one of these things we see in, in society as a whole that, that the, the richer the society, the more leisure time the people have. And when the more leisure time you have, the more it allows for the, the culture to grow on science and knowledge and technology and push the boundaries that you couldn't do if you're like, where's my next meal going to come from, right? How am I going to feed my family? And if it wasn't for coal, we would be living in a toxic waste dump trying to fight off the devouring earth out of caves. So it's like sticks. Uh, you know, who, who's going to call that dude a tyrant? Like seriously, like he's yeah, he's he's our savior. We love him. I love you, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're talking about what daily life is like in Praetoria, but what what are what is Cole's rule really like? How does he administer this empire of his? Um, how does he acquit himself with this power that he's grabbed? I don't really know if I like the direction that these questions are going. <laughs> with, with their divine benevolence. Have, were, did these get vetted through the Praetorian uh, process? This, this, this is a hard one. Really you're, you're free to answer truthfully. Okay. Uh, we only speak the truth here. Uh, yes. 
<laughs> is there a seer present for us? Here? <laughs> what is Cole's government like? What is Cole's uh, Cole's leadership like? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, John, actually could probably talk more about the structure of the government. Um, he's he's done a lot of work to to build out the pray for us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, Cole really does believe a lot in meritocracy. Um, if, you can, if you can carry the weight, you get to carry it, and until that weight breaks your back, you're kind of the guy in charge of that. If someone comes along better, he's going to get the job. Needless to say, his uh, chief uh, advisors and uh, um, politicians, effectively, uh, are called praetors, and they're some of the analogs that you're familiar with, like Marauder and other Mayhem and all them. They, they're basically the best at what they do, and they really uh, keep the gears of Pretoria moving smoothly and uh, allow you to have that four-day work week. Yeah, we like Praetor White. He's, he's a nice guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Marauder was his, his old man. Yeah, that was, that was back before the world was civilized. You're describing a utopia here. Yes. What's the price? Is, is, is everybody lockstep in agreement? Well, there's a there's a tiny little, very very tiny, very small. I don't even know why you're mentioning it. Yeah. It's like they're terrorists with too good of a word. So. They're like larpers. Yeah. <laughs> One of these, I yeah, they're just internet folks. They're myth, but, really. <laughs> this, this sort of you know, resistance. Yeah. yeah. We, so sometimes we call them the subversives. That's another. Yeah, we're just bad people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take bad people. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like some some guy who get the donut with sprinkles, and now he thinks he's like entitled to like blow a building up. Or something. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a building blow up. No, yeah, I've no, seen it. I've never seen it either. Yeah, there's like those uh, internet things we we'll talked about. It, it was a, it was a, a hoax, actually. Yeah, it was. it was definitely not cold proof. No, there's, there's, there's a, a group that labels themselves the resistance. We're not exactly sure what they're resisting against. Like, oh, I don't want food. I don't want clothes. Like, yeah. I don't want to eat. Yeah. Eat me. No. You don't like me. I like cleaning up trash. Get rid of these clockwork who are so helpful. And I mean, in, in all honesty, like that, sure, like, to get the world that we have, we do have to allow for certain things to happen, right? You know, it's, it's like, yeah, I, I'm okay with, with having the Sears there, because I know that, that if anyone else steps out of line, they're going to be taken care of. And none of my thoughts are bad, so I don't see what the problem is. Right? Like it's, I, I, I don't even think I've ever worried, ever. No. It's, ever. It's Maybe most, weird, actually. Most of the time you don't even ever see what that word means. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, but there is a group that, you know, I, I read a documentary about them or something. I'm, I'm not familiar with them at all. I have no connections in any way. I just want to say now. Neither do I. Neither do I. That um, one of them is, is uh, a member. He, he has some issues with some of the other characters. I'm not sure if I want to give away. Um, one of the main characters that we have, probably not. But, uh, all right, I'll say it. So um, one of the resistance members, uh, one of the figureheads is this, this poor, poor little man named Calvin Scott. And he, he, he claims that the something happened with like his wife was killed and he wants revenge and he's, he pulls Mother Mayhem in, into the midst of it. And we really just think he's delusional. We actually have on record that he did time at, at the asylum and yeah. he, he escaped somehow, and uh, now he's leading this charge. And it's really just de dementia for the most part. That's our... Well, the, so, so the scary thing that I heard about it is that the Sears can't actually track him. Or any of the I don't think that's possible. That's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's not possible. That was part of that documentary. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's this right. It's, yeah. it's got to be a hoax, right? Yeah. There's no way. Oh, did you hear about uh, the motorcycle guys downtown? I thought that was a like a publicity stunt for some new soft drink. I, I, I don't know what it was. Uh, well, why, why don't you tell us about that story, John? Uh, so uh, there's some motorcycle gang that uh, I guess 
you know, use like high powered automatic weapons and just totally shot up an office building and killed like 30 people or something. Did you hear about that? No. no. Was that yeah. the Matrix? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. It might have been. But, uh, yeah, so uh, apparently they're snappy dressers. <laughs> so is there uh, any crime in Pretoria? Uh, except for that one case now. No. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So if, if, if there's no crime, why does the Tyrant need to spend all of those resources? Uh, please refer to him as an It's a word Cole. Very insulting <laughs> term. Why does Cole need to spend all those resources? Emperor. <laughs> what are they there for? Well, they, you know, people, like, you know, they get lost and they need to find an authority figure, so they go to them. Or you have a traffic accident. Or, you know, you used to have traffic accidents, and someone needed, you know, direct well, the traffic drove, and stuff. So, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. every now and then people need help across the street. Or yeah. carrying their groceries when a clockwork isn't around. Yeah. Or if yeah. you can't afford one, but everybody can, so. Well, how do you account for the fact that if Emperor Cole actually published his budget numbers, which of course he does not, he doesn't need that, to. that the police department eats up over 30% of an annual budget. Okay, okay, so here's here's the reality of the situation. Praetoria is a utopia, but Praetoria is not the world. There are, there are still forces and elements outside of Praetoria that wish to do us harm. And those forces are being taken care of by other larger, more powerful groups, but at any given point, they can infiltrate Praetoria, and we do need a, a watchdog to have, actually look over us. They, 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 think they, can. they, they think they can. Oh, okay. They, well, okay. and here's here's the thing. Like, even, even if they if they if we know that they can't, that doesn't mean that we should just like kick down the doors and say, hey, we're totally safe, everything's fine, right? Like, we need people to make sure that if something was to happen, like our kids and our wives and our husbands are taken care of. And so when I see the Praetorian Guard, as much as they're you know almost on every street corner making sure we're safe, I feel safer for it. And I'll it's, it's vigilance. I'll pay that it's extra money for it. I, you know, assuming I ever well, got a, a paycheck. It was a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a paycheck. Everything's provided. Yeah. Donuts on Mondays. <laughs> I thought it was donuts on every day. Extra donuts on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> every other Monday. We get paid. Actually, had a donut. Uh, Friday. Yeah. Day, so, we, we have this utopia, that this perfect world that apparently is without cost. Uh, what's the role of powered people here, of superheroes? Well, we have the powers division that, um, that every powered individual uh, gladly signs up for. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's your civic duty to help keep the world um, and to help not just you know keep Praetoria safe, but to try and spread that to to the rest of the world. I mean, the rest of the world is practically devastated. I mean, that's why Praetoria is as big as it is, is that it was the only place humanity could actually come to survive against the threat of the devouring Earth. And the progress is, is swift. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Cole's Cole's a genius, and it's not just Cole. I mean, there's he's got his whole group there, and they're they're working magic, sometimes literally, um, <laughs> to, to bring us back, to bring the world back to the way. And yeah, man, it, it, he's shipping guys off to four corners of the world yeah. all the time. Like you know, like, there's a lot of power people show up, but very few actually show up in Praetoria uh, helping out. So he must be shipping, you know, yeah. every corner of the earth. So if you if you see a power guy on the street and you know you don't happen to see him ever again, it's not like anything happened to him. He he, he, he probably got shipped off yeah. to go to go help in Australia or. To, how do you account for the fact that none of these people who were shipped off actually come back? Well, they're busy. It's a... <laughs> none of them write their families, communicate, send postcards. They're I'm busy. I think actually, like, you know, I, 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 I thought about that and really it was, you know, we, we, were, I, you know, we were nice enough to actually let the families go and visit them. Yeah. So... so that, 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 the ones who, who mentioned... And that they wanted to go. Yeah, yeah that's what they, yeah. they wanted to do. Oh, okay, so we, we concentrated on the good that Emperor Cole has brought to Praetoria. And what else is there? And the world in general. And that's what I want to ask you. What are some of the drawbacks of Praetorian life, of living in Praetoria? If you, if you like manual labor, it really has to be more of a hobby. 
<laughs> I'll admit sometimes I, I hear about the days when you could drive your own car. That was that, that probably was kind of fun, but really like knowing most people, I don't. Yeah, want to that's all right. <laughs> um, some of the drawbacks. Uh, well, there's, you, there's you can't own um, uh, firearms. Yeah, so that, I mean, I, I guess they were fun or something. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like so I mean, there is, if anything, there's there's a very um, structured caste system to kind of work your way up to you know become a, a high ranking official, and that you know for some people they they feel you know there are people that are like oh I should just be given this right it's like well you're given so much more like you do occasionally have to work towards getting into the, the seats of power for the, the government and, and hard work is rewarded so I mean you know you could just enjoy the fruits of Pretoria or uh, you could actually work toward making it and the rest of the world better. Um, I, I, yeah, I do know like for the for the powers division specifically, um, because Preg Roid is uh, in charge of it, his concept is definitely um, the, the strong will survive. And so if you want a promotion, it's not just putting in good work, it's finding your boss and beating crap out of him. Is, <laughs> is really the way because then that proves that he shouldn't be in charge, you should. And, 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 that's, and that just makes a stronger force at, at, at the end of the day. So that, that might be a drawback if you're the, the boss. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, I don't want the, the, the weak guy to, to guard me against any threat. I want the other guy. He's hungry. Well, well all right. Let's, let's say you're a member of the powers division of the PPD. What are you doing? What, what's your life like? Uh, parades. Lots of parades. <laughs> Construction work for like the really heavy stuff, like the other clockwork can't deal with. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, um, again, we talk about this, like, going out and um, making sure the rest of the world is, is where it needs to be. There's there's a handful of things internally that, you know, I'm sure they do to um, help keep us safe that we don't ever have to see and, and we don't really want to see. I mean, they don't really tell us what's going on because, you know, at any point one of us, you know, might not be who we appear to be. And um, and that would... It's you know, kind of scary. Yeah. Well, it's not that simple. I actually know it's not scary anymore. Never mind. I don't even know what I was talking about. Um, yeah, it's a great feel better place. Yeah, I just got like a wave come over me or something. Do you have anything to add about Pretoria? Come visit. <laughs> We'd come love up. to have you. Come for a visit, stay for a lifetime. <laughs> Well, we're going to uh, take some questions. Before we do, I want to remind you to fill out your evaluation forms. Um, if you got one, if you didn't, I would we'll be happy to give you one. And also, please remember that we're only accepting um, whole approved questions uh, on this. But, but with that restriction in mind, please feel free to ask um, what's ever on your mind. <laughs> I, I, so, well, it's a matter of justice. Um, aside from the, you know, obvious threat of the uh, the uh, barrier and the inconsequential kind of thing with the resistance, what other, how should we say, subversive elements do we need to be aware of? All right. Well, well right off the top, um, we have to come clean and let you guys know that um, Emperor is a tyrant and he's doing things to humanity and the freedoms that we're losing because of this. And the, there are people that are disappearing all over the world. There are people that are forgetting who they are, their, their families, their people. It's, the, the real threat is not the resistance. The, the real threat is the Praetorian Police Department and Clockwork and the Sears. And the Praetorian Guard. And the Praetorian Guard. <laughs> yes, it is. And, and the Powers Division, who probably murder more people than uh, all of the the ones that, and, 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 and those are the powers that survive the evaporation? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like 10 years yes. So, um, so as for other things for you to kick the crap out of in Praetoria, is that your question? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, in the keynote we talked about, we talked about the syndicate, which is, uh, that the organized crime, hyper-organized, um, and, uh, John, do you want to speak any more to that? Yeah, so, um, 
for the organized crime families uh, to survive in this uh, totalitarian regime, uh, they had to go to extreme measures not to be discovered, and that's kind of the key behind their power that uh, you guys will uncover in the story arcs. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting world where um, you have Mother Mayhem in one of the major charges with her thought police watching every street corner. Like, how can you have a world that is going to be resistant? And that's, that, was the first, that was the first thing people had to fig figure out how to do. Yeah, we, we almost painted ourselves. We were like, oh. Yeah, we're like, oh, we they're don't want to be stopped. We were like, wait, where's the, yeah, they the are other side? They're way too powerful. And then we went, oh, hey, wait, there's actually some, an individual in our lore right now that would be a perfect example that we could go up against Mother Mayhem and show her what for. And, uh, so that's what we, that's what we want. So it, it's, it's like we've said a couple times. It, Praetorian Earth is not a direct mirror. If you're good on, on Primal Earth, there is a chance that you will end up being the same sort of good you know, fighting person on Praetorian Earth. Uh, Mike, uh, or of course on Virtue, uh, all hail Emperor Cole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how does our benevolent emperor uh, handle things like invention salvage and enhancements to the store? Will there be like a black market there? There will definitely be a market um, in Praetoria. Uh, most likely there will be two, and uh, through some sort of Dimensional, interdimensional trading uh, will have access to uh, the same sorts of resources that uh, uh, the primal the, the, the primal markets do. Thank you very much. I guess I don't want water. Yeah. So we we like to thank Cole for giving us the water that we're drinking. Oh, it's really good. It has electrolytes. <laughs> Resistance needs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mara champion server. And uh, my question is, you, you've uh, said that to loyal citizens of Praetoria, uh, Blip Marauder is Praetor White. Um, do the other uh, Praetorians get similar renames, and is that going to reflect into Primal Earth? Let's are we going to see a, a different, so when we see these redesigns, are these going to carry over to the stuff that's that's already there in uh, Primal Earth? Are, are you referring to like the Portal Core uh, missions? Right, the Portal Core missions, yes. Um, well, I think, well, one of these knows, like we kind of look, you know, kind of breaking cover. Um, we definitely look at the, the, the characters you guys have already fought as the superheroes of Pretoria, and then for what's their quote unquote day job. Right, like, what is their, what do they do when they're not mode broader, right? Like, that is a name he takes on. That is not necessarily who he is for most of the part, the same thing with antimatter. But I, I think more, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the question was more, are, are we going to replace the old models where they currently appear in game with the new models? So uh, most, well, uh, when it comes to the models, yeah. When it comes to actual storylines, we will get to it. <laughs> Well, we've heard a lot about how a lot of the heroes were, were going to see their dark reflections. Are we going to see some of the villains' good reflections? Like, maybe a good ghost widow, a good so-and-so. Do you mean like, well, she wouldn't have died, most likely. Yeah, but, yeah, but she will, will we see her like, in, in part of the yeah. resistance? Like, Belladonna would make an excellent resistance. Yeah, Belladonna would be a great choice for a yeah. resistance member. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer, protecting server. Now, uh, you mentioned some of the choices the government made uh, brought out the devouring Earth earlier. Does, this is a serious case of be careful of what you wish for, but does that imply that you guys might have a version of Hamadon in Pretoria that's more difficult? Not within the level range that we're going to be throwing you at it now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, if we throw it in for you at level one, that does that count? It would sure be exciting, though. Yeah. <laughs> have, you the the discovered, have the Rekis discovered uh, Pretoria yet? That's who? Have the Rekis discovered Pretoria. They're, they're not looking. Okay. <laughs> the Rekis were found by us. By Nemesis, yeah. Oh. DJ Phoenix, Virtue. Um, 
In Primal Earth, there is the Architect Entertainment that's run by a couple not so trustworthy people. Um, Forward thinking people. <laughs> oh, wait, well, no, that's, that's there, Sorry. Will there be similar technology in Praetoria for entertainment purposes, or have you, has Emperor Cole decided not to introduce that into Praetoria? Emperor Cole is still evaluating yes. all the paperwork on that. He <laughs> <laughs> will get to it in due time. It is interesting to think of the uh, Praetorian version of Dr. Ayan. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Um, I was kind of curious. Um, what would the role of, uh, I believe his name is Justin St. Clair, be in the Praetorian? Chimera. Uh, Chimera? Uh, I was thinking a manacle, maybe I got the name wrong. No, that's the secret, the secret entity. Oh, okay. I see. Um, also, what is the catalyst that will bring together the primal um, world and the Praetorian world? I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> That's a very good question. It'll John, be cool. Yeah, Justin Sinclair, who is Manicor on our this Chimera on uh, Praetorium. And John can actually talk a bit about maybe his role. Uh, yeah, so... Chief ass kicker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, one, one, well, you know, he's, he's the clandestine ass kicker. Yeah, he's, he's the aloof ass kicker. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he, he's he's kind of the head of the uh, secret police. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when when ninety percent of the empowered individuals tend to disappear, he yeah. he knew they were going to disappear before they did. <laughs> <laughs> he signed the document that made them disappear. I'd like to thank him for helping in the efforts to improve the rest of the world. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Promoted. <laughs> Hidden basket from virtue. So, my first, well, a brief question is what role there is for, like, you know, cat individuals and furries in the new Victoria? <laughs> That's an excellent question. And, and on a slightly out of character note, it seems like a lot of the ideas are drawn from 1984, like the idea of having police state and Big Brother. And yes. my That's question is, I guess, like, whether there's going to be the state of perpetual war with other, like, Factions or whatever on primal. Um, I, I can definitely speak to the um, the the nineteen eighty four aspect of it. Um, I I have a copy of Fahrenheit four fifty one on my desk as well. Um, Brave Brave New World. I read and was like, wow, this is a great idea. I have a copy of Fahrenheit four fifty one. Nineteen eighty four is definitely one. There's also another. Uh, there's a comic called Red Sun. That's a uh, in my opinion, you know, it's the what if su Superman landed twelve hours later, and and there's a and it just there's that was one of the kind of the backgrounds of kind of where we wanted to take hold as well. So there's there's a lot of reference that we're kind of drawing from to that. As far as the place for uh, furries and Praetoria, um, as as much as it might seem like Praetoria is a very uh, in, you know restricted world, like we want everybody to be happy. Yeah, so. I mean, if your furry can lift like a five-ton truck, <laughs> yeah, that's then fine. he's got a place in the power station. As long as you, <laughs> you can pro provide useful service to the, the, the government and people. You, you've been drinking the water again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, almost done. I'm almost done. This stuff is good. <laughs> um, Arbiter Fabulous from the Virtue Server, and I just want to say that uh, after having met Mother Mayhem last night, I have been really been rethinking my thoughts on Pastel All Hail Emperor Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I have three words that I think are on everyone's mind that has been dealt with in the canon in the past. Carnival of Light. Yes. Um, Carnival of Light. They're in the lore. Um, that is, is definitely, like, I kind of dropped a hint of that already in this panel, for those paying attention. Um, but, um, there will be, a, there will be a presence, um, for And I had a one uh, other quick thing, um, I, when you have the tyrant mission, um, you know, he's, he's basically kidnapping statesmen, and it sort of seems, you know, back in the lore then, you know, tyrant was more of the, you know, the, the, the goatee version yeah. of statesmen. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And I know you said you'd be getting around to that. What would Emperor Cole's impression of, say, Reichsman be? That's a good question. A threat? Yeah, he definitely seen him as a threat. I mean, the one thing that to know about Emperor Cole is that when he began seeing Primal Earth, 
he saw the chaos of this world. And I mean, at any given moment, you know, the world's about to be destroyed. And you know, there's villain groups that are ruling whole countries. And, and then he sits there and goes, wait, and you're saying like, I'm the bad guy here? Like, look at my world, right? Like, it's so. Yeah, we make a world-crushing super laser, we make sure it's in the right hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as Reichsman, yeah, he would, he would see Reichsman as a threat because Reichsman would want to impose his own rule over there. I, I mentioned there might be some, you know, mutual respect for holding to your ideals on that level, but uh, he'd still want to punch him in the face. Well, I, I, <laughs> you know, Reichsman's a fascist, and Cole has no place for fascists. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we know that the the, the, clock, the clockwork all around in, in Pretoria, so I'm wondering if there's um, the clockwork team is involved at all in that? Like, can you talk about that? I don't know if I can talk about that. <laughs> That's 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 all I think we should probably talk about. There's a uh, there's a lot of uh, elements to the storyline um, that you're going to experience as you're playing through it and with reveals there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you guys can ask questions about specific storyline elements all day long. We can give you some stuff, but we're not going to give you everything. Yeah, a lot of it too is we want you to experience, yeah. like to yeah, yeah, get all of it. Like Read the text. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, what I want to know is in Praetorian Earth, where is Lord Nemesis? It's interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lord Nemesis, like I, you know, it's it's really not as uh, as impressive as you might think, it's because. <laughs> You know, sometimes people just go a different direction. They just end up being a normal person. It was it was a fluke, a one in a trillion yeah. chance of him becoming who he became on our Earth. So the odds of it yeah. happening anywhere else pretty remote. I, I like to think that he just died an old happy clockmaker. Yeah. And, that was <laughs> and uh, what about uh, Ouroboros? Do they have their own version in uh, Praetorian Earth? Or With no show? Lord Nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Um, not not one that is if it's if it's unknown to the the people of Pretoria, they they have no awareness of it. Uh, JKS Virtue Server, uh, I'm just wondering for the uh, character development when you have the choice to join the uh, Powers Division, uh, are you? There's going no to choice. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be able to? Uh, in the story, rise through the ranks, or is uh, Chimera going to send you off to uh, Primal Earth before you can actually get a decent promotion? Uh, or is that one of those we can't talk? That's kind of one of those things. Of course, okay. <laughs> but you will get promotions. You do get to punch people in the face. Yes. <laughs> Did, did uh, any of the Miracle Man comics have an influence on the adult? You know why you mentioned that, and I was like, Miracle Man, what would he, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, if it was, it was in the far back recesses of my brain. Okay, I'm Nylonis from the Protector server. In spite of Emperor Cole's best efforts, I find it impossible to experience everything in Pretoria. Is there ever going to be a way where I could go back and do other stuff I might find that I have missed earlier in my childhood of Pretoria? <laughs> Left, if so anybody... if we are done with Pretoria Utopia questions, we can actually open up to story questions because you have the story guys up here right now. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we can just keep talking. Like, with, you know, Sorry, John, he got up faster oh. than you could walk. <laughs> it was a nice walk, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm Russell, out here from uh, Protector. I want a copy of the story Bible. Any chance of maybe an edited version being ever available? Never. No. <laughs> 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 
Some of it's a good read, and some of it will put you to sleep on the toilet. So. <laughs> Abraxas from the uh, Justice Server. Since uh, Emperor Cole's initial invasion to kidnap a statesman, what does Lord Recluse think of Emperor Cole and the Praetorians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I'm sure Recluse sees. Um, well, he sees a threat as always, right? And definitely knowing, you know, it's it's another coal. I could totally hear him going, "It's another coal." <laughs> and I've known that dude for decades, and I know he's trouble. And he's never just gonna let lie. And this is a this is a coal that killed the Praetorian version of him. Yeah. So that that may even chap his hide a little bit more. <laughs> Silk Knight, Justice Server. Um, well, since Marcus is kind of fascist, but not really, uh, I was wondering, how is he reining in his granddaughter these days? That is a... What was the, what was the term you used? That is a field of landmines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yes. It's a minefield that, uh, that we've been tiptoeing through for a while. Writing stories involving the two of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Needless to say, he can always just resort to punching her in the face. <laughs> Defiant from uh, Virtue Server. Um, I'm wondering. Virtue since... represent. Virtue. Virtue. I'm wondering since all these heroes are coming into Praetorian Earth. Are any of the Freedom Phalanx or anybody else coming into uh, Praetoria as well to try to? You mean like seeing you know Statesman or Manticore or Positron like come through to Praetoria? Uh, their last. Uh, foray there didn't really go very well. Very well. Um, so uh, a lot of face punching, a lot of face punching, <laughs> and, a lot, and a lot of backfiring plans. So I think it yeah. came down to like, oh my god, if I miss this shot, we're all dead. <laughs> and, and, and then they ended up with baggage. So as, as long as you know nothing's quite threatening our Earth yet, they're probably not going to get involved. They leave that up to the real heroes, which is you guys. And one more question um, with. Uh, We've heard about heroes going back and forth between becoming a rogue or, or you know, vigilantes with the, uh, with all the other characters. Um, what happens if somebody wants to stay a hero or wants to stay a villain? Are they getting anything special for doing so? Uh, we're going to try and give them some cool stuff. Yeah. Okay, I think we're on the last question here. Which just thought of know. some. Just thought of something else. Um, considering that this is going to be primarily, at least hopefully, at the beginning of the movie, said one through twenty, uh, we're going to be probably revisiting some old contacts, seeing some different sides of them. So I'm assuming Azuria is now in charge of the Midnighter Club because of her unbelievable talent and <laughs> <in> security. <laughs> Well, thank you all very much. Yeah.